Hey you guys, it's Peter, and welcome to my channel, Peter Likes Books. <laughs> I am so excited, and I just can't hide it. I know, I know, I know, I know, I want you, I want you, <laughs> because tomorrow, oh my god, tomorrow at midnight going into Monday starts Spookathon, and I'm so spooked. So anyway, um, I know that you guys were wanting me to do a full review of John Green Turtles all the way down, but that will have to wait until later in the month because um, I had to do my finalized, <clears throat> excuse me, TBR um, for Spookathon, which I'm so excited about, right? And um, I'm also, I started two nights ago, Maggie Steve Otter's All the Crooked Saints. Okay, I have never read one of her books before, but stay tuned because one of her books is going to appear in my, I have hair hanging off, <laughs> hair is everywhere. Um, one of her books is going to appear in my Spookathon TBR, but this book, you guys, is fantastic. Okay, number one, it is like the characters are so well developed. It is something like, it's magical realism, like to the 10th degree. Like I have never seen, it, it is done so well. It is very, it, it's told very much like a, I mean, I can't remember the, who the guy it is, but it's like Love in the Time of Cholera or Gabriela Garcella Marquez. Do you guys remember? It, very much, it reminds me of that. Although it reads like a funny teleno telenovela. Oh, you guys, you've got to read her new book, All the Crooked Saints. I mean, it is not just a new young adult book. It is fantastic. I mean, absolutely fantastic. It is so, it's woven rich and deep with like family storytelling. It is so beautifully done, you guys, like honest to God. And I don't know anything about her, so I'm like, and I ain't getting paid to make this video, so let's just get into this right now. So anyway, oh, I'm losing my order of all my videos, or all my books. <laughs> are you guys ready? Oh my God, now they're all out of order. Okay, are you ready for my 2017 finalized Spookathon TBR? I am so excited. Okay, so what happened was, if you watch my last TBR, <laughs> I had like 10 books, right? And I was like, look, I was sitting here last night, I was watching all of the Friday the 13th movies, as one does on Friday the 13th, and I was like, listen, Peter, you need to be honest with yourself. Okay, you always do this for every bookathon or readathon. You always have two books for every category. You never even finish one of them. So you're not gonna do that. So why don't you just read one for each category, make it a book that you really wanna read for that category, just make it work somehow, because then you're more likely to finish it, right? So first and foremost, I have to tell you what I did, was I went into Audible last night because I was like, okay, so I'm gonna do, I'm gonna read the Audible book because I always listen to audiobooks when I'm like driving around and doing all kinds of stuff. And so I know I'll finish that. So that will be at least one book that I'm gonna finish, although it's not for any category. But I am going to listen to, here I bought it right here, Stranger in the House by Sherry Lapina. And that is the group read that they are doing. So I already have it ready, baby. Midnight, it's, I'm gonna be in my car driving around listening to Sherry Lapina talk, or I, I don't think it's Sherry Lapina, I don't know, uh, narrated by Tavia Gilbert. So I guess I'll be listening to Tavia. But then, oh my God, for $2.95, you guys have got to check out the daily deals on Audible. They are fantastic, right? I mean, it's like clearance shop shopping like times 100. But anyway, Hell House by Richard Matheson, who so many people have told me to uh, buy, narrated by Ray Porter, was on there. It is nine hours and 15 minutes. So that would be the next book that I listen to. I also want to listen to this month, the last in the Reading and Freighter As the World Dies zombie trilogy, and I want to listen to the first book in the White Trash Zombie series. Those are like my other books that I have to finish this month on Audible. Like those are my musts on Audible. But I will be listening to A Stranger in the House, so I'm really excited about that. Okay, I have my notes right here. Books and Lala, you better be really proud of me. See, you should have asked me to be part of this. People always say, oh, next time Peter will ask you. And they, they're thinking, oh, he's so old that probably next time he won't even be alive. But Books and Lala, Lala, listen, okay? Last year you said, do you want to be involved in it next time? I said, well, yes, I would love to. She didn't ask me. <laughs> I love her so much. Okay. But anyway, I have all of my little notes right here of the categories. And at the bottom, I even have Stranger in the House by Sherry Lapina, which we already addressed that. So anyway, number one, a thriller. I'm so organized, you guys. Look, I took all of my books out. I added some. And then I was like, okay, which ones am I going to read? But my thriller that I'm going to read, which right here says <laughs> thriller. <laughs> like Michael Jackson's thriller, is Final Girls by Riley Sager. And I narrowed it down between this and like three other, I actually shifted some categories in here, so just get prepared, because they all work. This is a thriller, we know it is, okay? 
this book has gotten a good reviews and bad reviews, so I don't know. I'm kind of excited to see. It's totally like, if you guys know what it's about, which it's like a really long, go look on Goodreads, or if you don't follow me on Goodreads, go do, but, or Amazon and check out what it's about. But it's supposed to be really, really good, and it's about these girls that survive, like, they're the last ones to survive, like, these murder sprees. It sounds like something I would absolutely love, so it'll probably be something I end up absolutely loathing. But anyway, <coughs> excuse me, so that's my thriller. And then the next category, <clears throat> spooky word in the title, and, um, oh, that's not it. Here it is, Okay. I cannot believe, I had all these books in front of me, I was like looking at it, and I was like, that is a spooky word. Like, it was just like standing right out in front of me, and I didn't know it the whole time. Are you ready? <gasps> Maggie Steve Otter's The Raven Voice. I mean, Raven, uh, Raven is a spooky word. Edgar Allan Poe, and look, I even have right here, spooky word. <laughs> so I know which book it is. So yeah, The Raven Boys. I'm excited, now I'm really excited to read this. It's like focusing in and out, I don't know what's going on, but anyway. Now I'm really excited to read this because I'm reading, you know, uh, All the Crooked Saints right now and I love it. So I'm like, is she like my new, like John Green? Like, is she like my new author that I'm just going to hands down love everything that she writes? I don't know. I, but I'm excited to read this. So, and this too has equally gotten really good reviews and really horrible reviews. So we'll find out, I guess. Okay. Next category, Childhood Fear. This one was kind of a stretch, but I picked out Karen McManus's One of Us is Lying, a geek, a jock, a criminal, a princess, a murderer. Who would you believe? Childhood fear. <laughs> I love post-it notes. Any excuse that I have to use A, a post-it note, and B, a Sharpie pen. Not, I, I love the markers, but I have enough of them. The Sharpie pens, you know what I'm talking about? Any excuse I have to use a Sharpie pen or a post-it, baby, you look at my house, okay? I got post-its, I got the little ones, I got the big ones, I got all kinds. I love the post-its. So anyway, do you guys love the post-its? Anyway, so this is the one I'm reading for Childhood Fear because I always was afraid of getting caught for lying. <laughs> I know, it's kind of a stretch, but get over it. Okay, the next one is um, a book with orange on the cover, and I am reading Black Rabbit Summer. And if you look, there's orange there. And then there's orange on the camper and on the car. There's orange all over. And I'm really excited about this, you know, and it was interesting because... Um, I was like looking in here and there was like, I was looking at some of his other books that he's written and like as Robert slowly wakes from a routine operation, he can hear, he can feel, but he can't scream. The operation isn't over, but life as Robert knows it is. I mean, Kevin Brooks has written, it's called Bean. He's li written a lot of like really kind of scary books. Um, he wrote this Bean, Black Rabbit Summer, Candy, Kissing the Rain, Lucas, Martin, uh, Mar Martin Pig, The Road of the Dead. So I'm really excited about reading this book because I've heard great things about it. Okay. <clears throat> the final book, I've been sick for like four days, you guys. I really apologize. The fourth and final book is one that takes place in a spooky setting. And you know what was really interesting is that like, I, this was the category that I struggled the most with. Do you remember? Like I had The Raven Boys because it takes place in a graveyard. And then I had The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman, which we'll just have to wait. And I was like, I cannot find a book that uh, like is in a spooky setting when if in reality you look at these books, every single one of them takes place in a spooky setting. So wouldn't it make sense that I could just pick any book to put into that category? Like probably any scary book in the world would fit into the category of spooky setting. But I picked Five Nights at Freddy's The Silver Eyes. And I even looked in here and I was like, okay, let's see if on the back, just to be fair, because I don't want to break the rules of Spookathon 2017. No, I wasn't asked to host. Okay. <laughs> Bitter much? No. Okay, so anyway, Bitter Much, Peter, from Peter Likes Books, <laughs> hunts down and stalks the moderators of Spookathon 2017 for not being included. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> just you watch out. Okay. From the creator of the best-selling horror video game series, Five Nights at Freddy's. But then I re read on here, it says, 10 years after the horrific murders at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza that ripped their town apart, Charlie, whose father owned the restaurant and her childhood uh, friends reunite on the anniversary of the tragedy. The tragedy. I don't know what tragedy, but. And themselves at the old pizza place. The old pizza place. The old pizza place. Which has been locked up and abandoned for years. I, I cannot imagine a more spooky ass place than an abandoned pizza place. Okay. I really cannot imagine a spookier place than a pizza place that's closed. Because I love pizza and I want to eat pizza all the time. So if it's closed, I'm pissed. <laughs> no, but an abandoned, like, abandoned restaurant, that does kind of sound scary, don't you think? Okay. 
So let's get all these books up here. Because I know this is how y'all are and you like to see the books, stuff like this. But if I put this on the thumbnail, if I was like, then you guys would know what my books were. Then why would you even watch the video? I wouldn't, right? So anyway, I am so excited though for Spookathon 2017. I will be right out there on the front porch on midnight with my coffee, drinking my coffee, reading my books. I have nothing to do on Monday, so I'm very excited about it. Are you guys participating? If you're participating, leave it in the comment section below. And if you're going to make excuses, I don't even want to hear it, okay? I love you. Bye.